What's up, YouTube? We all know why we're here. We all know what you clicked. We are here to do a cooking challenge. Not just any cooking challenge. We're here to do a post-apocalyptic cooking challenge. This is a cooking challenge where we try to make the fanciest dish we possibly can while also trying to simulate the environment we think would happen after a zombie apocalypse. So here's the plan. Each of our three contestants will be acting as though the apocalypse has already happened. And not recently either. The zombie apocalypse happened six months before this cooking challenge. Not only has the apocalypse happened, but we've had a decent amount of time to try and get back to normal and we still haven't. It's a little too real. In this scenario, each of our three contestants are going to pretend as though they happened upon a piece of meat and it just so happens to be their daughter's birthday. So they're going to try and cook a fancy meal under the circumstances after the apocalypse. What does that mean? Well, one, it means they won't have access to any municipal power or water or gas. They also won't have access to any fresh ingredients or any grocery stores. On top of that, we're going to assume that they get no spices. To make things a little bit easier on the contestants, we are gonna say that looting is allowed, where looting is just shopping at a store on less than a $20 budget, but not at a grocery store or anywhere that sells fresh grocery. On top of that, each contestant is randomly assigned a meat and a set of candy caps that happen specifically to them with this catastrophic event. Each one of them has to create the fanciest dish they possibly can, and then we will all judge it at the end. So here's the thing, I have to hobble everywhere for the next two hours because I lost a foot. And then I have to lay down every five minutes. So I have to set a five minute timer to go off <laughs> to lay down. Oh my gosh, this is going to be terrible. Okay, so I got to keep this mask on and these sunglasses on the entire time and not talk to anybody. I think I'll be okay with not talking to anybody. I, I, they said I could talk to you, talk to the camera. Okay. I'm thinking we're gonna want something that's gonna cook fast, some kind of meat that's gonna cook fast on high heat in fire. So that's the kind of beef we're gonna wanna go with. And we need a way to introduce good flavors in ways that wouldn't have deteriorated. Making it to the car was so freaking tiring. Oh, I really hope my daughter appreciates this duck. I'll be fine with water because I've got plenty of water stored already so we can use some of that. It's just seasoning. I think the hardest part of this whole challenge is gonna be finding where the flavor comes from. As you all know, I am driving with my stump leg. I'm gonna do it. This is the apocalypse, no one's on the road anyway. Cheetos. At this point, I've basically just decided that I'm gonna use chips and stuff as my seasonings. I'm gonna take sardines because I think that's like a secret weapon, secret, secret flavor weapon. People don't know what to make of me, but no one's willing to approach me because I've got the cane and the hobble. I feel like a terrible person right now. This is now the second time I've had to take a break in the store. I didn't say anything about this. This isn't refrigerated. Ah, crap. I got exhausted outside of the car. I gotta take a break. Here's the question. I do have Nori. Could do some simple sushi. Hmm. The person I'm most afraid of right now in this challenge is definitely Matt. Matt's owned his own food truck. Matt's worked in restaurants. He's cooked his whole life. I've eaten his cooking before. It's fantastic. Um, but I think Dan is also kind of a dark horse. Like, don't count Dan out because I've eaten his cooking before as well, and it can be pretty amazing. And so I am feeling a little bit outmatched in this because I'm not a big cooker. Walking around with a, a cane and one foot dragging behind you 
I mean, one stump leg since the foot's gone, but yeah, it's tiring. Oh man, it's so hard to see with just these sunglasses on. Okay. Okay. Five more minutes to lay down. I'm gonna go. Step one for me is I have to wash everything in Pepsi. Whew. Had a good break. Oh yeah, oh yeah, look at that. Good, good in Pepsi. I'm not gonna lie, I do have a little bit of a home court advantage. I had all the materials and stuff. What? Zombie apocalypse, man. I've been training for this forever. Okay, here's the plan. Uh, I'm counting this oil that I can use because the way that I use it anyway is it's recycled oil. So this is stuff that I usually only use to fry with anyway. And once I'm done, I filter it out, recycle it. And so I get to use it in a few months. So, ah, uh, why did I come up with this challenge? Yes, I totally agree with you. That we would have planned for our daughter's birthday. So after six months, we would still have this. We would have rationed nori and soy sauce to make that available for a special treat. It's right along with the bolter way of thinking. <laughs> Good teamwork. So my basic idea is my basic, Matt's dying. So my basic idea is I'm going for basic principles of baking and flavor profiles and trying to get those out of ingredients that I would never normally pull them out of. Not going for something that looks particularly appetizing. I'm hoping to surprise everybody with how tasty it actually is. Because it looks like... It just, just completely disgusting. Like, I kinda hope I win and that it tastes really good, but I kinda hope that it's just absolutely awful. And Matt just like, gags. So I made a quick tempura. I'm gonna kind of uh, spray that out. And then I've got some panko to throw in there. And uh, go take them out to fry. These in. but I'm gonna use the MRE bags to cook so it'll work out. And that way I have enough time because it's almost six o'clock right now. Oh no. I just got so dang dehydrated from picking these peppers. Subscribe to our channel so that we can give you more content like this. This is Randall. I'm not gonna walk over there again. There's some good day in there. Thanks Randall. Comment below with what ingredient you think you'd like to save to use after the apocalypse. My choice is high proof alcohol. You can cook with it, you can clean with it, you can light it on fire, throw it at a zombie. Plus then when you're feeling down, you can use it to get smashed. <laughs> Very not cooked. I'm a little concerned about my hummus right now. Uh, it's uh, it might be terrible. Right, let's be honest. Uh, I decided to try and use MRE bags to cook a stew, um, which actually surprisingly got it pretty warm, but I couldn't contain the heat well enough to actually get the duck cooked. And then the MRE water spilled into the stew, and uh, 
yeah, that stuff's contaminated and you aren't supposed to drink it. So I'm disqualified for having inedible food. Uh, Matt's. Here's dish number two. Matt's plate. Corey's plate. And what's left of my plate there looks scrumptious. Over here. I cooked it with love. <laughs> Happy birthday. Do you girls want to try dance? No. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> you, can't. you know, I showed Layla and she said the same thing. <laughs> so this is shrimp. Um, okay. The rules I used with this is I only used food storage stuff, except for the shrimp. The shrimp, <clears throat> the shrimp I went out into the ocean and, and caught. <laughs> Skewered. Mm. You can start with you want, sushi if you want any extra soy sauce mm. or any extra teriyaki. That is really good. Trip. I think sushi was just a gamble. It was because it was we didn't know how long we were gonna have to wait to eat it. Yeah, and I think that's the only thing. So that was my risk. Um, oh. yeah. This is really good though. I could just say here and eat this. There you go. It smells, it smells fishy, and I don't say that as like. Uh, <laughs> all I all I taste <laughs> is like <laughs> meat. I don't I don't taste any ingredients, Corey. Oh, all right. It smells fishy, <laughs> mm. but it's actually not. I I can tell there's a little bit of fish taste, but actually adds a little bit of flavor to the beans. Like, the beans help mellow it, mellow it out a little bit. You're right, it's not hummus. <laughs> <laughs> it's very much not hummus. <laughs> all right, all right. And I think if it was hot, it would taste better. Wow, good. Cool. Tastes like steak. And that's, and that's good, so that's the thing. Mm -hmm. That means his seasoning technique worked because if it tasted like something crazy weird, but like he's actually got some flavor, it doesn't taste too bland. So there's yeah. two meals, three people. We can't vote for ourselves, so it's basically just day to day. Oh yeah. So the review on things: the sushi was kind of cold because you know. Somebody took forever. I don't know who that was. And then they got disqualified. Good thing uh, they're not here. Yeah. I hate to be that guy. But it was still really good. Like, I mean, I would still eat it for lunch. I don't have high standards that's, for lunch. That, that, that's a quality review. Like, I go to lunch. I eat this for lunch. <laughs> I would eat this for lunch. I'll go to that sushi place. Um, the, the shrimp was delicious. Loved it. The steak, uh, my first bite wasn't like, I couldn't really tell that there was any seasoning on it. The second one, delicious. Um, but the, the bean dip was where the magic happened. <laughs> Is that good, good magic or bad <laughs> magic? <laughs> because like, I put it in my mouth and instantly <laughs> felt this like, kind of rush of fish. <laughs> that was washed over by a jalapeno people. <laughs> Stop making me laugh. Two main entrees, like top notch. I would eat either one of them for a dinner, serve them to my wife. Uh, but inside dishes, I'm gonna say the sushi won over the beef. <laughs> hey, winner! Yeah! How is it? Is it good? So if it was your birthday, would you be happy to get this meal? <laughs>